Hey kids, Brandon from Smitty's Automotive coming to you with a video on front brakes on this is a 2015 uh, Ford where are you? This is a three-quarter ton F-250 uh, same procedure is going to apply for the F-350 as well all the way from like 2003 to present I believe so uh, we're going to start by getting a jack under the front axle and lifting it up. If you can't do that, if you don't know how, then you should probably just turn this off and take it somewhere. Because, let's face it, you're in over your head. But, if you can get that far, catch up to me. I'm going to pull a hubcap, get a tire off, hit that subscribe button. Let's do this thing. All right, the hubcap clips over the lug nuts. Uh, there is one little notch cut out in the hubcap. Get a pry tool behind that. I use, like to use plastic so that it doesn't damage the rim. And it just pulls off, easy peasy. Then, 21 millimeter. I'm gonna use an impact. That's fast. Tire pulls off. We set that to the side. Let's see if I can get you a better angle. Let's see what's going on. Okay, so the caliper itself. These are 16s. Back for the sake of speed and then big mistake people make is just ripping this thing off of here don't do that because as you pull pull on these uh, pistons here on the caliper you're dragging it across this brake pad and sometimes it'll break the pistons off in there so you're gonna need a flat bladed screwdriver or a pry bar and we're gonna get in behind here and we're gonna create some space. So if you go in this hole here with a, little, a screwdriver and you can catch the middle of that rotor and then we just gently pry across here, that compresses this piston just a little bit. Same thing on the second piston over here. Just gonna compress that and you can see there's a a gap in here now created some space and that will just fall off of there now I have these fancy Amazon special hooks I like to hang my caliper from something so that it's not hanging from the brake line or bungee jumping from the brake line when it falls off then we have 21 and 21 that hold this caliper bracket on your brake pads will actually come out and if you were only doing pads which i think is foolish most of the time but if you're only doing pads at this point you could just slip your pads in compress your caliper and put it back together but we're doing pads and rotors so we're going to get 21 the same socket that we used to pull the tires off and we're going to pull one bolt here bolt in the caliper bracket at that point your rotor should be free and just come off okay so now we have this caliper bracket sitting on the bench here your new brake pad set hopefully comes with these if you get cheap brake pads it won't so don't buy cheap brake pads but and then you pop the old ones off. Get those out of the way. And then you can see right here, this caliper guide pin 
as a torn boot. That is, that is going to be a cause of failure in this, in the brakes in this truck. We want to get that taken care of. So this one's good. And the guides both come out pretty easily, reasonably. So that's a good sign. But always, always, always when you do brakes, pull your caliper guide pins out and inspect them inspect the boots and then we're definitely going to grease them well before we put them back but this boot i'm going to steal a boot off the other side and we're going to replace that so this boot lets the grease out and the dirt in and the water in this pin's going to rust and it's going to seize in that in that hole and then this um bracket can't move and adjust with the brake pads as they wear and so your brake pads will start wearing only one pad until one pad's gone and the other one never gets any friction and they get hot they drag causes a lot of problems always 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 clean and check your brake guides okay so i'm back with a little brake cleaner and I'm gonna clean these up good you can see as that breaks that down, there's quite a bit of dirt in the grease that's on there. Make sure they're clean. Sometimes you have to get a wire brush and go after them if they're bad, if they're rusty. And I think this, two of these brake guides is 10 bucks. They're not in great shape, replace them. And then I have this tube of um, brake grease, but they sell it in little squeeze packs. I do a lot of brakes, so I have plenty of it. But I grease grease the pins up good. I dab a little bit extra in the hole, push it down, make sure that the grease gets all the way into the end of it, and then it's going to stay there. Then I stole one of these boots from the other side. I have some ordered and on the way. We're going to slide both ends in, make sure your boot seats, and repeat. What? Oh. Uh, order the. Did she call you? Yeah. All right. And then, a wire brush. Any wire brush will do. Just a handheld one. But I'd like to get in here, clean inside those guys. And then you come with a bunch of these. There's a pile of them. One's, um, one goes inside and one goes outside. You can see here that these little tabs are on the inside and if I leave them like that they'll hit the rotor because there's not much clearance in the middle of here for the rotor. These tabs can't stick out. Neither can this little little knobby. So this one has to go over here. There is a right and a left on these. And whenever I put these in they get greased. I grease just about everything I can because it makes for quiet breaks. 
So we grease them, put it on this one. You see how the little barb is on the outside? That's where it goes. We're going to speed you up here. Okay, and then I want to make sure that these are clean in the insides of here so that you don't get grease on your caliper. And then we're going to grease in the trough of where our brake pads ride as well. Okay. Next, we take our new brake caliper, or if you're turning your old ones, I highly recommend you at least turn them. You open them up. Brake calipers from the factory generally come with a protective coating on them that keeps them from rusting. We want that coating off so that your brakes don't have to burn through that and gum up your pads before you even start braking. So we're gonna use a little brake cleaner all the way around them. And just wipe it off. Brake cleaner on this side. Wipe it off. And then we go to the truck. Okay. These guys go on your bolts. And then my old bolts that came out of these guides, you can see that there's blue in the threads. Anytime you pull a bolt out and that has blue or red on the threads, that means there was Loctite on that bolt from the factory. So I have blue Loctite, which is lighter strength than red Loctite, but we're going to drizzle a little bit in the threads here. Let it kind of run around and then Okay, it's very possible to put this caliper bracket onto the spindle and put your pads in there, but I prefer to put them on right here while it's sitting on the ground. So, you just stick a, the bottom in and fight the top into this bracket they're pretty snug but can still move which is important because they need to be able to adjust themselves but you do want them snug if they're too tight then they don't move so I'm kicking you same thing here get the bottom or the top in and then we work the other end, and we'll get the top in, I guess. Work the top or the bottom in. And these guys are tighter than most other brakes that I do. Kind of a pain in the butt. Ah! We're going to send it just like that. Okay. 
Now we're back to our spindle. Looks like I got just a little bit of grease on here. I'm gonna make sure that's cleaned off before I put brakes on there. Don't want grease on brakes. And then gently slide that in there. Try and be careful not to bump any brake pads out of the place. We're gonna get our Loctited bolts. One. Two. After they're started, I'll just take my impact and bump them in. And you can take these brake pads and squeeze them in tight so they don't fall out. We'll go to our torque wrench. Ford says 166 foot-pounds for these caliper bracket bolts. So, tighten them down. Perfect. Then, Scooch over here so you can see our brake caliper. Our brake caliper needs compressed. I have a fancy tool, but you probably don't, so I'll show you how to do it without it. Old brake pad, set it on top of it, on top of the pistons, and then a pair of channel lock pliers or a C-clamp works just fine and just squeeze. If you can't compress these calipers with a pair of pliers or a C-clamp relatively easily, you have another problem. Calipers get froze up. All right, I'm sure I sped you up to about a thousand times on that video, but that took about no, 30 seconds to compress with a pair of pliers, pretty easy. And we'll unhook our caliper, bring it back down here. Don't leave a fancy hook hanging. And after it's compressed, you might have to push your guide bolts in a little bit. And then we have our Pin bolts, one and two. Going back to our 16 millimeter socket and the torque wrench. The torque wrench says 55 foot-pounds for these Excellent. That side is done. Just need a tire put back on and lug nuts torque to spec. Let's do it. Big old heavy, what, 37 inch tires or something? Yeah, they're massive. But I'm gonna lift these. Ah, bad boys up here. Just 
start. Always start your lug nuts by hand. Get at least a couple good turns out of them before you ever put a power tool on them. Get my 21. Back and forth, side to side. I'm gonna set this down. Back to our torque wrench again. 165 foot pounds for the lug nuts on the Super Duty. So, the same crisscross pattern. Go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I always start in one spot and go around one more time. We're going to come back and you're going to line up the cups with the lug nuts, which actually doesn't line up with the dots, and then just couple bumps with your palm around it locks it back on and then repeat the exact same procedure for the other side and then anytime you do a brake job always before you put the vehicle in gear pump your brakes until your brakes are firm so you don't take off running because there's a lot of movement still in your brake pads so you need to tighten those back up against the rotors before you start driving and that'll do it for us.